Good morning. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Ramana and the higher representatives of the Jaffna University for giving me this wonderful opportunity to meet you all together. And I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the management and principal of our prestigious KSA institutions for their continuous motivation and support. Uh, today's topic is importance of machine learning in today's era. So what is machine? Why you want machines to make learn? Uh, is it essential to make the machine learn? So these are the things what we are going to learn today. Why learning is important? And uh, why machines to be learned? And uh, what are the types of machine learning? How artificial neural networks works? And what are the algorithms that are essential? And what will be the future of this machine learning? And uh, some real time applications with some case studies are to be explained today. Hope you all are interested to listen to this. Let us start the session. So, learning. Uh, learning uh, that is, it changes our neural structure or function. Whenever we see a picture, we will observe the shape, structure, the color, whatever things we see through our eyes are get registered in our brain. So automatically, that will change our knowledge by modifying the content. So like that, we will uh, get some improved content. And also the skills will be improved, our behavior can be modified. So the values will be automatically changed. So this type of contents are said to be as learning. Not only the product, what we view, but also what we hear, what we write, what we speak, what we read, etc. will be considered as learning. So this is about the human uh, learning method. So in this way, we are going to make the machines to learn so that we can solve other real world problems in order to get solutions in an easy manner as well as in an effective manner. So this is what the learning specifies and this is an interesting topic that is uh, what is the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning as well as deep learning. Artificial intelligence is an entire technique that executes the machine based on the human behavior and uh, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence and it uses statistical methods to improve the machine's experience, to make the machine's learn, to evaluate the machine's performance. And finally, the data trending technology, deep learning. So it is a subset of machine learning, which uh, gives the multi-layered neural network feasible. So with this execution methodology, the deep learning works effectively nowadays. So on the whole, Artificial intelligence is the core part which includes machine learning as well as deep learning. So this is the major difference between these three aspects and entirely it comes under the domain of artificial intelligence. Coming to the description of machine learning, as I already told, it is an application or it is a subset of artificial intelligence. It makes the computers or it makes the machines to learn automatically without any human intervention. So there is no need for the support of humans to give any input or to try the output. It automatically, once the model of the machine learning is determined or created, or determined, yeah. you can directly execute the content and it will give the required output. And also, the machine learning, they have the capacity to handle massive data, that is, quantity of data can be more, and the results will be more fast when compared to the traditional programming. So, we will be seeing how the traditional programming differs from machine learning, so that in your research as well as in the future projects, you, will, uh, you can uh, use the machine learning itself for better results uh, as well as for better identification. So this is the normal description that is given between the traditional as well as machine learning program. The first part really represents what we are doing, that is some latest uh, programming languages like C, C++, Java, whatever it may be. We will uh, write a program and we will give an input that will probably process and we can uh, get an output. 
So this is the traditional programming methods so far we are giving. But machine learning is quite different. We will be giving an output as well as the data and uh, the data for training and also about the program. So entirely this collective going to build a model and based on that model we are going to deliver the output. So the essential thing we have to be concerned with the machine learning is building a model that is suitable for our data. Because we can use any type of data in the machine learning methods. It can be a video, image, audio, that is structured, semi-structured or unstructured data. So the data can be of any form, but building a model is essential so that it can get a, or deliver a suitable output and for that we have to give the output also. We must know the output and based on that we can predict the result and also the performance of that particular model can be developed. So not a single program or single model can be used for all type of data it can be developed from one model. So normally for a problem uh, we can uh, calculate through traditional programming. First of all, we will be developing an algorithm which is nothing but the uh, normal uh, steps that are there, taken into programming language and we are, will be giving the coding to the uh, programming language. Then through input, we will be implementing the algorithm that is the coding and the result will be given. So this is the method how we will be giving the solution to the traditional program. But it is not the same for the machine learning. For the machine learning, we have to prepare our data. What is data preparation? Is it essential? Yes, it is of course. It is essential to prepare the data that is suitable for our model. That is certificates data pre-processing. So even though we are having any structured data, that is it may be a text or it may be numbers or whatever it may be, we have to select whether it is suitable for our model. So for that, we are, uh, we, there are uh, several pre-processing techniques, especially for images also. And one more thing, we are, uh, we will be using the terms features in the machine learning methodology or in machine learning terms. Instead of characteristics, we will be using the word features. For example, when we are um, seeing an image, it can be of any color or shape or uh, the background can be different. So these are the characteristics of the image. So that can be taken as the features for the identification or it can be help us to provide this to the So these are the features and based on these features we are going to prepare a database and with that the help of the database we are going to execute the program. So first thing is in uh, machine learning we have to prepare a database. The database already existing in the several repository and we can add collect it, but check whether it is suitable to your problem. And also the next one we have to select the model and based on that model the data has to be taken to the machine learning algorithm. So for that we can use several methods like normalization so that our data can be made suitable to that particular methodology. And this input can be given to the machine learning model and we can retry the result. The result may be of any kind. It can be a numeric value that is in terms of percentage or as an image or as a text, whatever it may be. So selection of model, preparing an algorithm for machine learning is essential to provide a, or to have a better solution through machine learning. Unless and otherwise it is, it will be similar to the traditional program. So the important note already I have said about data preparation. Here we will be using the term data set instead of input or uh, database like this terminology. The basic terminology what we will be using is data set. Here the data set is nothing but collection of data that what we are going to use in that particular machine learning model. So it can be divided or it can be 
segregated by the user itself as training data, validation and testing data. So the training data is in order to make the machines learn. It is similar to what uh, teachers are doing with students. We will uh, train the students, uh, the students will be trained by peers, giving the lessons or uh, giving some presentations or uh, giving the notes or uh, through some diagrams or through some videos that is the previous training. Here also we are making the machines to train in such a way they can identify or they can store the knowledge of the particular data. And again, next one is validation. We have to validate how we can validate by doing some test. So by doing some test, we can validate the student knowledge, the learning capacity, likewise the machines are to be validated. So using this validation, we can identify whether the machines are in the right way or there may be some updation. So normally we will through some tests we will identify the students, the average students, below average or more above average. So based on that extra coaching or something can be done by the teachers in the same way. Through this validation we will change the training methodology or specific parameters can be added for better identification in order to get better output, that is the better results. So this training and the validation methods are the additional methods, separate coaching, special coaching can be identified whether it is right or wrong using the testing data. So this testing data is also from the part of the data set where we can identify whether our model is working. The testing data, the value or the result is already known. We are verifying our model whether it suits or the model is working perfectly with this training, validation and the testing. So on the whole, the data set plays an important role in providing solution to the machine learning. So as a diagram in the presentation, this can be displayed like this. So totally this is this data set. We are segregating a part as training, a maximum part as training. And in order to validate, if we are studying five lessons, only some of the questions will be given for validation. Not all, all the entire five lessons will be given. And some part will be given due for testing. So the, this is the way the machine learning is executed. So now coming back to how a machine learning works in a practical way. So first we are providing the training data. So already we have learned that what is training data from the data set. So that data is provided to the machine learning algorithm. So using that machine learning algorithm, we are building an input model. So for example, the model that is preferred for handling numeric data cannot be given for text or video or whatever data. So the data must be in such a way that is suitable for that input model. So the new data can be given. So in the vertical thing, vertical line, you can see the training data, how to train the machine learning algorithm and also the input, model input data. So now a user is giving a new input data which is going to be executed in the machine learning algorithm and a prediction is given, an output is given. So the output given is validated that and if it is right, the validation is right means it is represented as successful model. If the validation is wrong, then again it goes back to train the machine learning algorithm. So this is the normal methodology what a machine learning uh, program developer has to be done. So repeatedly we have to check trial and error concept is uh, will be handled in order to make a successful model for identifying the solution. So this is the entire uh, working of machine learning. So there are uh, basically three types of machine learning, one is supervised learning, then unsupervised learning as well as reinforcement learning. Supervised learning as uh, 
professors do in a class. There will be a supervisor and the supervisor will train train you. That is will be a supervisor. Under the supervisor, uh, you will be trained. Unsupervised persons who are uh, more intelligent, hard to, doesn't need any support. They are self-sufficient in learning. They will learn by themselves and the results may be are men and people. So this is LBS and supervised learning. Reinforcement learning, that is uh, my life, my rules, that will be always a trial and error basis and it is similar to supervised learning. So these are the three major types of machine learning and we will be discussing this in detail. So this is the entire uh, execution method of supervised learning. So in the image, uh, whether the given contents are clear or not, what you can see in the boxes, we are giving an input raw data and uh, above the algorithm there is a box where the supervisor is there and he is giving the training data set as well as the desired output. So based on the data given by, given admit, the data admitted by the supervisor, it is sent to the algorithm. So the algorithm is then processed and we can pick down. So there are the flaws are reduced when compared to other algorithms because there is a person or there are, there, is, there are some techniques that can be supervised in order to get good results. <laughs> this is said to be a supervised result. So every time someone is watching us in order to give the correct results, that is the major task of the supervised result. Next one is the unsupervised learning. Here also we are using the same uh, input as well as output, same processing. Here you don't know what you need the output. The output may be anything. For example, unsupervised learning, if I am asking to give a group of students, then the, the group may be of any pattern. It can be said as clustering. If I am asking a group of students, from register number 1 to 10 means I know that group will contain the students from register number 1 to 10. This is said to be a supervised term. So the output will be known to us and we are providing the content. But unsupervised, we don't know the result. I am asking 10 students. The 10 students may be of any group, any class, any department like that. So, but I know that will be students. So this is unsupervised learning. There will be no supervisor and also we don't know the output also. So through this learning algorithm we are training the data set and through some processing methods uh, especially we will be using KMS algorithm and fuzzy methodology for this unsupervised learning. So this will give the exact output what is desired to the particular problem. And this is the reinforcement learning. So giving an input, we are checking, we don't know the output because when there is no supervisor, there is uh, no unsupervisor also. Something is happening, I will learn by myself. If there are corrections, I will correct by myself. No need for others to help me. So this is the concept of reinforcement learning. So we are giving an input and we are checking whether it is right or wrong. If it is wrong, okay. Why it is wrong? The contents are noted and again we are giving the input. So, uh, so that we can make the corrections and make the results perfectly when compared to the previous two methodologies. Because we are making uh, self learning the machine, either not running under the supervision, it is learning by themselves so that it can correct the fault by themselves, not under the supervision of others. So, these are the three main methods of machine learning, supervised and supervised as well as reinforcement. So coming uh, to the detailed description of this methodologies, we are given some uh, methods as well as uh, some real time applications that can be used in these methods. Supervised learning, it can be either classification or regression. So for classification we can give image classification, especially in medical data. This is the key task of classification of Then identification of drugs. 
it may be in the bank or whatever the customer has a credit card issue or a loan issue for a particular person. So through this classification methodology, they are identifying the parts as well as the images, the diseases can be identified. Any type of diseases are identified through this image classification because they don't know the output and through that technology, early diagnosis of diseases are easily identified. Next one, under the supervised learning itself, comes the weather for regression, where the real-time applications are weather forecasting and market forecasting. Normally, we need to know about the weather forecasting. Uh, the, for the next two days, there will be rain. Right? Or uh, next two days, the time will be dry. So, this forecasting is collected and uh, represented to the machine and it is analyzed through the past data. From the past data, we are getting the present information whether the climate will be dry or rainy or weather cold or rainy. So, this is happened in the regression with the forecast. And also, market forecasting. This is especially for business persons. So, they will be how the market can be. In, uh, what, what is the trend now? If there is a festival season, how the products can be manufactured? What are the methods to market? So, these are the current trends that are used in business. How can we the offer can be given? What is the latest methodology used by the company? Everything will be analyzed and based on this analysis, they can uh, sell the products in the market. So, for this also, our machine learning is helpful and these are major real-time applications for the supervised learning and especially for the regression. And this is about unsupervised learning, especially there are two, here also two categories. One is the clustering and the second one, dimensionality reduction. First one, clustering, as I already told, we will be using k-means method as well as fuzzy concepts in order to make the clustering efficient. So we have to make the customer segmentation, this is one aspect. So whenever uh, we are purchasing someone through online or offline, nowadays when why we are asking about uh, our details, especially our mobile number, so that way they can identify whether we are uh, male or female, within that uh, age limit of that particular person, how many times we are purchasing that uh, the particular product, what are the searching methods, how they are uh, interested in buying the product, whether they are buying or just window shopping, etc. will be identified by this customer segmentation. So, normally, not only our uh, machine learning methods is used for the uh, calculation or something, it is a, it has elaborated its applications all over all the fields, not only in the science field, but also towards the management science also. The next one, targeted marketing. How to target a particular people? For kids, how can they be focused? Normally, the dresses of the kids will be more colorful and attractive, and uh, the cartoon pictures will be there. So that this is the trend in order to attract the marketing. How it can be showcased or uh, how it can be delivered at the advertisements, through newspapers or uh, televisions or through social media or through online shoppings, whatever it may be. So, through this clustering methodology, we are clustering the people or the consumers so that they can identify the profit or loss of that particular business. The next one, Dimensional reduction. The first thing we have given structure is the book. It is especially for the life science students, which back where they will be using some protein structure like that. So, in order to discover a new structure, that will be n number of dimensions of that particular product. So that in order to reduce the dimensional reduction, we can be using our unsupervised learning for better results when compared to some other tools which is already existing. Then next one, big data. You know what is big data, I think so. So we can we will be having vast number of data, vast number of features, vast number of rows as well as vast number of columns. 
and we have to evaluate the results and have to know the performance of the execution. So not all the given data will be useful for that particular learning. That will be changes. So we have to identify how the particular data will be used in what ways, which is important or which is not important. In order to make that, we will be using dimensional correction. One more thing, and after reducing the dimensions of that particular data, we can again use the methods either the supervised, unsupervised or reinforcement according to our real problem. So these are not at all separate but we can combine and make a hybrid form of both classification plus methods. The next one, reinforcement problem. This is an interesting one and mainly uh, the researchers are towards classification and clustering and uh, reinforcement learning this is a separate part because it includes a lot and lot of learning and uh, the guess may be of any time so that according to that we have to write uh, we have to build a model that is suitable for all type of activities especially for learning tasks learning self-learning are several learning methodologies are now available several labs, several techniques are given, some video classes, some text, some, uh, some have been uh, defined in the text and they will identify whether it is suitable or not, how many directions are there, especially in plan lesson contents, identifying whether the contents are correct or wrong. Then second one, gaming, this is a very good pro product or very good process and a suitable example for this reinforcement learning. Because as already explained in that example, reinforcement learning, it is some kind of error basis. Initially it will learn and if it is wrong, it will again learn and it will be automatically corrected. So gaming to artificial intelligence is can be uh, can be done to reinforcement learning also. Then real time decision. So at the moment we have to take some decision. We don't uh, know about the past or we don't want to think about the past or about the uh, whatever it may be. So for that this reinforcement learning is right to give some real time decisions, especially for the robots. So the robot remediation can be given or can be executed through this reinforcement. So the content or the statements of this machine learning program will be more when compared to the previous because they are executing with the past data. But here it is not about the executing with the past data. Now the user can use another one. So they have to reply or they have to react according to the user. The user may be of any kind. Uh, he may be a kid or uh, he may be a boy. She may be a girl, whatever it may be, the gender may be different, the age may be different, automatically the thinking can be different. So this reinforcement learning plays a key task in machine learning. So hope I uh, all have a bit clear about these types of learning. I am going to give a detailed note about this execution of the artificial neural network especially in the classification because I am interested in this and I am uh, doing my projects also in artificial neural networks especially in this uh, big part of the world. So here the artificial neural networks we can segregate into input, hidden as well as output. Uh, hope uh, you will be seeing the colors and the text also clear I think so. So the light yellow shaded is the input layers, so several inputs can be given and the hidden layers are more when compared to the input as well as output. So the output is the classes or the, the, whatever the content can be given. So here plays the vital role the hidden layer. What is the hidden layer? So giving the input, for example let us take a class itself. So the teacher is teaching equally to all the students. 50 or 60 or whatever the strength of the student, strength of the class. They are giving the same input, there is no change in that. And here the hidden layer works because hidden layer is nothing but 
the potential that differs from one student to another student. One may be so bright, one may be so dull. The same concept can be given, can be identified by each and every one in a different manner. Not all the persons accept the content as it is. So the given player plays the vital role here. So what is the vital role? Here we will be giving some additional input in order to get the desired output. So what is the additional output? So normally, uh, if I understand uh, the question lightly, because I am not conscious during at that time, I am physically present in the class and I'm not mentally, so that I can hear something what the professor is saying, but I am not clear about the content. So during that time, we need to give some more additional effort in order to get the output, that is the marks or something, placement, anything. So, in order to give the additional input, here also we are using some more technology that is giving some additional parameters that is termed as bytes. So, during the hidden layer, we are giving some additional energy to the particular neuron in order to give the perfect output. So, in this neural networks, we will be telling the contents of the input or hidden layer or the contents of the output layer as neurons. So, so, when we are using feed forward means, we give a, get the input, get it to the hidden layer and went to the output layer. Yeah. If we are using back, back propagation, that kind of input, then if the output is not suitable, that if the student is below average in that particular subject. So again, the same process is given. Some additional coaching is given by the teacher. And some more effort has to be provided by that particular student until we are getting the desired output. So, this is a previous back propagation, and this is the difference between feed forward as well as back propagation. So, here this is the input plus weight that is additionally given to the input layer. So, the input is x1, x2, etc., up to xn. And the weights are represented using the W. And weights are also can be randomly changed, not fixed for every input. If I am giving uh, additional weight for, for example, 2 to X1, it is not so 2 for X2 also. Uh, let's have a detailed example. If all the students have secured marks below 50, but we want to give some additional marks or some grace marks in order to make the results booster. So one who secure 45 can be in the 50 range by giving 5 marks. If a student scored 30 marks, then he have to give additionally 20 marks. So the weights is different based on the input. So the W1 or W2 or the, again the WN is not a constant, it is randomly fixed based on the input in order to get the desired output. So here it will be the transfer function, what it will be doing is it will multiply and uh, multiplies the weight with the input and uh, uh, sum the entire things. This is the first step. And the second, before going to the second step, we must know more detail about the activation function. So there are uh, several activation functions. So these are the some of the activation functions which are used mostly. And the most efficient activation function commonly used is this Gaussian function. Especially the bell curve uh, function. And this will be used as activation function. What is the activation function? Why the function is used? So as I already told, the hidden layer, the hidden layer do some magic in order to get the desired output. So previously we have seen about the input and the transfer function. Now it enters into the activation function. Here the activation function makes the data to be executed in a compact way so that giving some additional parameter value or parameter weight so that we can get the desired output. 
So the output is the main pole, the input may be of any kind. So between the input and the output layer, here the transfer function or the activation function is helping us to get the correct output. For this, we are using several activation functions. Why we are not using other activation functions? Normally, the same activation function will give better results. And some uh, for uh, some methodologies or some real time problems, they will be using same one. The others are not normally used as the results provided by that are not uh, good when compared with other activation functions. Hope you all understand about the, this neural network execution. In this way, the neural network executes. And also, so these are the main performance why we are not using traditional classification methods and compare to neural networks. That is an input efficiency. The time taken for uh, executing a process is totally less. And that will be generating more number of neurons. So this can be taken as an uh, disadvantage of this particular method. So uh, when uh, we are talking about neural networks or artificial intelligence, whatever it may be, it is something connected with the neurons. Hope you all understand. So neurons, whatever in, uh, in our brain we are considered. So the same thing is considered as neuron here also. So what uh, researchers are doing nowadays? They have been started the researches towards cognitive science. How the neurons are working? How like that? How we can make the neurons of these machines to learn as uh, through the cognitive science? So they have developed several models, and this is one of the model, and this is actually based on the cognitive science or cognitive learning of uh, human. So the humans normally we learn as I already told whenever we see uh, we are seeing an image or we are hearing a song, we are watching a video, the contents will be already stored whether we like or not like. So this is the execution methodology of our friend and it can be used whenever it is required. So uh, there are some constraints some uh, object-level model knowledge strategies and also the code. So these are the contents that are stored in the metal and in the object-level web clips. For example, uh, if uh, I am going to meet a friend, uh, he or she is uh, not in touch with me for the past 20 years. It means I will identify them that is uh, this person is known to me but I am not here. And later, by telling the, the past stories or past experiences, we can be corrected. So, this is the execution methods and this is the cognitive model. And in this way, the cognitive model is executed. Whenever we are using or frequently seeing some contents, it is stored in our memory and, and it can be required within a fraction of seconds. So, this is the normal model of our brain how our cognitive uh, method is executed. So here, there are also two content on this control as well as monitoring. So there is a control level as well as monitoring level. In the control level, what the contents that are seen, whether it is required or not required, it will be stored and in the control way, it cannot be executed. Why this control is essential? Is it essential? Of course. Is it, it is essential because a large number of contents are loaded in the brain as well as in the machines. It is not essential to get, uh, deliver the entire contents what are in our mind. So the question, the answer must be related to the question, not uh, the, the contents what we know. So that some control mechanism is there and the control mechanism must be monitored. So this is the normal execution of the of our cognitive model, and it is expressed by Nelson and Array, and uh, he is a neuroscientist. So based on this execution, I would set up uh, as a uh, model using this cognitive approach. So what we have done is that is in particularly in the hidden layer, 
we can use this quantity part because as I already told in the previous slide that is the neuron growth whenever the input is increased or the weight should be updated the neurons of the hidden layer cannot be cut out they will be grown automatically to n numbers so in order to reduce this there must be some control mechanisms so using this cognitive model we have controlled the, the neural growth so what happens in order to reduce it if it is reduced because uh, in the image we have seen only 5 neurons or 6 neurons if it is uh, if it is real means then it will be n number of neurons n number of hidden neurons the space the time we are using machine learning especially for this fastness as well as the time consumption memory etc so in order to avoid this we are uh, executing this model and it is a success model the performance of this model is given here it controls the growth of the neurons and also minimizes the error rate error rate in the sense not uh, minimizing the syntax error or semantic error it reduces the error of misclassification so that is it classifies accurately for several data sets we have received the more than 98 percentage 99.8 percentage like this is. so the accuracy is totally improved and uh, the weight application is done not random it done through some calculations so these are the methods what we have implemented to the neural network through this cognitive model. So these are the two methodologies that, that is existing and it can be benefited uh, for your uh, future research as well as project search. As we have succeeded in this method, it will be helpful for you also. <laughs> so this is the next method uh, for a classification um, that is decision tree. Well, we have uh, seen a whole image of mark or everything. So in order to make a decision, we will be giving several questions. So several questions may arise uh, whether I can wrap this dress too. So today is Friday, whether uh, this dress is okay for me. I have a uh, bad business um, last month, whether the uh, friends will remember this. Like this, many questions arise, especially for us in a bad business. So likewise, whenever a person is entering into an interview, the person's the HR is giving some options. So we have to decide at the moment how it happens, or the decision must be taken up itself. So these, like this, the decision tree will be related and the data can be given. So we can clearly see the picture. So initially, if the salary is not up to the mark, he or she will be going to decline that particular job offer. Otherwise, if it is suitable or if it is up to the person mark, that he, he is seeing for some problem. And if it is not suitable, again he is ready to decline his offer. And also, next offer, next uh, process. So, here also he is taking two options, yes or no. So, he, through this methodology, not only considering about the salary, we are already have to consider about the working place, for working environment, uh, several things we have to adapt. And so that this, this kind of decision tree will help the machines to take the right decisions. And especially, we have seen that in the reinforcement learning for our robot navigation and all, this kind of decision tree methodology can be included. As I already told, it can be given as a hybrid. So, so far we have seen how machine learning executes the types, and the particularly these two type, uh, types of methods. One is the normal neural networks with the three input layers, and the next one, how to include the cognitive methodology, that is the cognitive learning in that particular, in order to improve the execution time. Next in general, we are going to see about the learn machine learning applications which are quite interesting what we are using nowadays you can, um, uh, you can see how these kinds of uh, applications are implemented or executed first one is the traffic error whenever we are using people now 
we will not be giving two or more or three directions and one direction will be saying you will be having traffic and you will take some time the color will be changing yellow, red so this is by the past data that is stored by the Google server and no machine learning is the next one is social media hope all the persons are having Facebook live so whenever we are uploading a photo that is particularly a good photo we will automatically show our friends so identify the faces, recognize them these are the persons so this is through machine learning so this kind of identification are normally used through in our day to day right? but we don't know the technology what is behind us being the students of this particular computer science we must know the technology so that when we are given this application then transportation here transportation is how the execution is given what are the methods what are the transport is comfortable that is given to the children then product technology whether we want to purchase this product normally um, more number of advertisements will be given to your mail like ID, you enter the blog spam or in your uh, Facebook ID several uh, recommendations will be given about the product so that is comes using machine learning how machine learning works when it is known to the machine that you are interested we, you have given the click you have searched the website for this number of times or this uh, particular seconds you have used the, on the, the viewing that particular product so automatically it comes to know that you are interested in this kind of product so this kind of product recommendations will be given to you for that the next one virtual personal assistants Alexa so this is a Google assistant so they, it will uh, react or it will uh, do what you say so if I want to hear a song if I want to search a thing anything can be done through this virtual personal assistance self driving uh, cars Tesla so this is uh, through the uh, route navigation they are controlled by machines and they fix the time price fixing the prices so if there is a need automatically the prices will be go up if there is no need for the product today then the price will be more. so this is the direct price so for everything nowadays the uh, computers are used we already know uh, computer or the software engineers are doing something uh, making the IT movement in an effective manner as the technology makes the world so closer but not only through the technology or uh, developing software there are a lot and lot of things that are used as application but as in the today we learn Prop reduction As I already told in the classification method in order to identify the fraud especially in the critical issue or issuing a loan like that so these machine learning concepts are used they are giving some details of you and using that they are easily identifying whether you are applicable for this or not so these are the basic and main applications that are used by means of machine learning. And this is a pictorial representation of this machine learning in this real world. So we have discussed about the real world, but what about the future of machine learning? Whether the machine learning is going to be used in the future? Uh, yes, of course, it is going to be a boom uh, in the machine learning area. So now we are uh, you may already heard about machine learning in South way that we are using the future. As we have already seen, machine learning is included deep learning. So deep learning is a subset of machine learning. So there is uh, no uh, deviation. So machine learning will be the next, uh, will be giving a revolution to the next future. So especially I have uh, given here uh, two areas, one is the education sector as well as the health sector. In the education sector, the machine learning is going to give a better advanced te technique, especially in the learning technologies as well as in the assessment technology, how uh, an analysis can be done, what kind of analysis, whether uh, 
how to increase the uh, efficiency of the particular student, how uh, they are uh, interested in learning, what kind of learning techniques or learning methods can be given. In the, this kind of analysis will be given based on the characteristics of the students to the particular faculty. And based on this, the faculty has to train themselves in order to reach the students. So this is the emerging uh, technology emerging applications related to the education sector. Coming to the health care, already they are proving uh, the, the machine learning has made its footprint in the health uh, technology. But even though there are still several areas that are not yet, uh, covered by through machine learning, this is identification through images as a research project we are doing, the drug discovery, medical imaging, how the treatment can be given, maintaining of records, this is prediction. So, combining with Internet of Things, machine learning is going to be vast in the future, especially in the healthcare technology. So, normally we will be using the search engine Google, I think so. So, how are Google using machine learning? Yes, of course, Google is using machine learning. So I have taken some examples, some screenshots, what I have felt. So these are the applications, real applications of machine learning, what we are able to use. Whenever you are searching something, it will automatically use a list of content. It may be searched by someone or not searched by someone, or it may be searched by us or not searched by us. So this is done by means of machine learning. Through machine learning, they have built a border. Whenever an alphabet is given, it automatically requires the related, the related patterns that are executed by more number of users. So based on the ranking, the contents will be displayed like this. So this is the best example how Google uses machine learning. The next one, the weather. So Google is normally giving the weather prediction. So now it is 30 degree or 30 degree or 40 and in the evening there is a chance for rain. Or it is rain, or it may be cold, or it may be dry. So these are the contents given by the Google weather. Whether forecasting is uh, done by some other person, some other technology is done in uh, several areas, uh, particularly by the countries, and it is maintained by the government. But Google is saying about the weather of your particular place. Especially, I have given a 637215. This is the pin code of the country code of. Uh, my particular area, as my, uh, my institution is there. For that, I have taken the screenshot yesterday. So, 33 degrees Celsius, and if, in the bottom, you can see the timing of the predicted weather. So, this is also one of the technology used in Google by machine learning. Then, Google Assistant for a alarm for converting the dollars and also. As I have been told, in order to pay the music or whatever the search things, some contact list we have to get. So everything is happening because of this machine learning. Translation. So now whenever you are going to type a mail, the sentence will be completed by Google itself. If you, if, you are, uh, if you are liking that content, you can give the tab, so automatically the contents will be given that. Or you can type it in that. So this is the methodology that is enhancing the product the nature and also helps the user to use the application or the software in a good manner. So here the translation, the translation method is also changed nowadays and it is better when compared to previous. Several languages can be translated not only in English and also the contents given in English can be rephrased through by checking the grammar. So it is also done by means of machine. So these are the features that are uh, done by Google. Not only these features, there are many features. I have taken one of some interesting features so that it can be used for you. So these are the features that are included in Google, especially for this machine learning data. So I have to Discuss about the future applications as I already told, machine learning in education 
as well as the gender gap, and particularly in search engine and digital marketing. Now, apparently, within this uh, four limits, it is going to be stopped. It has been already extended to several fields. For example, the web forecasting, or the launching, and uh, identification of phantoms in the satellites, so that uh, in uh, uh, rockets that has been sent to the moon, because uh, we are going to send, uh, in India, we are going to send a robot to the moon also. So it is artificial intelligence, and uh, that uh, definitely there will be contents of machine learning as well. So not only limited contents are there. Each and every aspect of our today's work, our today's problem, will be given a solution to it. So these are the future novel applications of machine learning. So this is an uh, uh, important uh, cycle. So every year, Gartner will be releasing some uh, graphs like this. It can be said as graph, but it is Gartner uh, yeah, hype cycle for the technology which will be. In the top position, or what will be the purpose, or which technology will be obsolete in this year, or it has been, it will be done. So this is such a chart given. That this is especially for artificial intelligence. Until now, the machine learning is in the top of the curve, top of the bell curve. And that is the contents is very little, the text is very little. I can't maximize. Excuse me. So that is given as auto ML, that is machine, uh, automatic machine learning. And also in the down area, you can see graph analytics, machine learning, and natural language loss. So everything that is related to machine learning will be going to the top within this year. And also there are colors, and for that color, they are given some identification also. If the color is white, it is uh, it will be reached within two years. If it is in sky blue. It will be going to reach that particular level in two to five years. If it is in dark blue, five to ten years. So this is the color variation. So the field is evergreen and it can be reached in future for a long time because the need is more. Because we people have been uh, practiced using technology. Without technology, we can't uh, live. This is. Uh, Main cause why this uh, researchers are good. So, this is the important uh, content about the future of machine learning. Also, one more uh, proof this is also another uh, proof that is given, uh, another study that is uh, done by EMC. So, the machine learning will be grow when compared to the data scientists. Even though the data scientists they can be using the analysis or something. To so we can try the data, but with the data we have to use something and we have to do some analysis or whatever it may be. It may be it could be done with the support of this machine learning. So we have uh, we, are, we will be going to have a good future for this machine learning concepts. And uh, these are some of the opportunities that uh, that will be available in future for especially for the machine learning. Uh, Developers, so that uh, data processing or uh, geological representation, because we are very much uh, related in and taking care in nature in order to protect it, how it can be represented because of the industries, the pollution are more, how it can be protected, and also financial analysis as I already told. So, these are the wide opportunity that is available. Uh, for the machine learning technologies and the researchers are already there, they are doing their job but any researchers like you have a more number of ideas in order to improve. And finally, I uh, hope this is my last slide, as the coin is having both sides, machine learning is having got a lot of advantages as well as few disadvantages. Without disadvantages, the technology will be wrong. So we have already seen about the advantages, I think so, even though I will uh, explain it. So it can be identified easily, there is no human intervention is needed, it works automatically. Continuous improvement, uh, in our example itself, from neural network, we have jumped into cognitive learning. Then 
handling multi-dimensional data using dimensional generation, it can be uh, reduced and reduced and wide applications. So we have touched almost all the fields for this. So these are the major advantages. So that comes the disadvantages also. Data acquisition, how to get the data. We have a pretty careful about getting the data. So this is, that is a thing. Because there are normally more number of data. The data, what is needed to build a model is a challenging task. And second one, time and resource. Because machine learning will be using some of the tools or some tools that are uh, proprietary tools. Whatever it may be, building a machine learning model or data acquisition itself will require more time. Then interpretation of results. The results, what we have received, we have to identify whether it is right or not. Because in traditional programming, if I am going to add two numbers, you know the result, or it can be done by calculator. But here it is not so. So, strong study towards the machine learning as well as towards the application what you are going to do will, give, will become an advantage. Otherwise, it will be in the disadvantage. Then, high error support. That can be higher as I already told you. If you are not strong in that particular application, or data set, or data processing, or data selection, then the machine learning model will be not uh, to that mark, so automatically the results will be wrong and uh, we are not able to identify the uh, errors as in our normal programming language. So these are the advantages and the disadvantages of machine learning. On the whole, I want to recap what we have uh, give, uh, given uh, today. So we have given about the definitions of learning, machine learning, how it differs from traditional programming language and what is the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning as well as deep learning. Then how a machine learning works, what are the types of machine learning and we give a case study about how an algorithm works and also about the real-time applications of machine learning. Then what will be the future of machine learning and finally advantages are Hope you all have enjoyed this session. Thank you for your patience and attention. If you have any queries, you can join me.